We'll go with the Honorable Sam Blakesley, uh, a former state, I have to say Republican senator, because that's important to know that this is bipartisan testimony. We're very honored to have Sam Blakesley here, the Honorable Sam Blakesley. You have great background in, in nuclear safety and serving people, and I talked to you, I don't know, what, a year or two ago, when all this was hitting the fan about this new earthquake discovery, and you were so uh, forthcoming, so please proceed. Oh, thank you, Senator Boxer, and Ranking Member Vitter, members of the committee. Uh, may I ask that my written remarks yes. be entered into the record? They will be. Thank you for this invitation to testify today at the hearing regarding actions to ensure nuclear plant safety in the aftermath of lessons learned at Fukushima. I'm Dr. Sam Blakeslate, and let me start my comments by stating that I am a lifelong Republican, a scientist, and am not anti-nuclear. Uh, my testimony here uh, today reflects the culmination of my experiences as a former state senator, as the GOP leader in the California State Assembly, as a member of the California Seismic Safety Commission, and a former senior research geophysicist with Exxon. When elected to California's legislature a decade ago, I raised concerns that state-of-the-art seismic assessment technologies used by oil companies had never been applied to identifying offshore earthquake faults near Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant. I therefore, in 2006, authored legislation, and Governor Schwarzenegger subsequently signed legislation that mandated the, and mandated a report that was released just a couple of months ago about the new seismic hazards at Diablo. But even before the release of that report, as Mr. Hirsch has just testified, in 2008, um, the utility confidently declared to state regulators and the public that their seismic study program had already learned everything there was to know about the surrounding seismic landscape near the plant. Amazingly, only weeks after these assurances in writing of safety, the USGS announced the discovery of the powerful shoreline fault within 600 meters of the plant. And now, here we are with updated seismic data from the studies released just a few months ago, confirming what many had feared and what the utility had long denied. A number of new earthquake threats do exist, threats that are larger and closer to the plant than previously believed. The report uncovers the following revelations. Contrary to earlier representations, the Hosgrey Fault is, in fact, connected to the San Simeon Fault capable of producing a 171-kilometer rupture. The Hosgrey also connects the powerful shoreline fault, introducing the potential for a magnitude 7.3, just 600 meters from the plant, and 300 meters from the intakes, a magnitude 7.3. There are now five earthquake hazards that can produce shaking greater than an earthquake on the Hosgrey Fault, the same fault which the utility claimed was the controlling fault and the largest threat to Diablo. Despite these astonishing findings, the utility continues to argue the plant is now safe, and in fact, now it is safer than ever before. How is that done? They've concluded this by developing a new, less conservative methodology that reduces shaking estimates from all nearby earthquakes. The information about these new faults is so compelling that it led Dr. Michael Peck, the NRC senior resident inspector at Diablo, to issue uh, an official dissenting professional opinion stating these earthquakes could, in fact, by the utility's own estimates, produce shaking stronger than permitted under the current license. He called for closure of the plant until the utility could prove that the reactors could withstand potential earthquakes on these faults. Yet, his concerns were silenced by the NRC. For the NRC to de facto accept this new, less conservative methodology, which reduces estimated shaking from these nearby earthquakes, would be a stunning delegation of authority to the utility and NRC staff that would result in dramatically weakened seismic safety standards at the Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant. This passive erosion of regulatory oversight is exactly what led to the Fukushima disaster, the Deepwater Horizon disaster, and the recent unexpected shutdown of California's San Onofre nuclear generating station, all of which were foreseeable and avoidable. In fact, just this year, the Office of Inspector General at the NRC reviewed the factors leading to the shutdown of San Onofre and chastised the NRC for allowing the utility to sidestep the license amendment process. 
So the question before us today is, how will the NRC respond to these new revelations about new earthquake threats that surround Diablo? Will they repeat the mistakes of Japan's Nuclear Regulation Authority and rely upon the utility's representations? Will they give the utility a pass around the license amendment process, which is exactly what happened at San Onofre? Or will they recognize the dangers of passive regulatory oversight and insist on higher seismic safety standards? You heard in the prior testimony, the commissioners testified that the complex and convoluted licensing history at Diablo. But we now know much more about seismic issues than when Diablo was licensed. Therefore, the NRC has a responsibility to the public to define updated seismic standards through a formal license amendment process that protects the public interest. This process ensures a robust, independent setting where the best technical arguments can be made in public rather than behind closed doors between the utility and NRC staff. I'd like to use this opportunity to urge a license amendment process for Diablo in the light of these new earthquake threats. Thank you. Thank you so much, Senator. And Doctor? I don't know which one trumps which one, but we'll call you Senator Doctor. Could you also confirm that ever since the Hasgri fault was first discovered, to your knowledge, the NRC has never required PG&E to prove that the reactor's safety systems could withstand such a severe earthquake using the conservative safety assumptions that NRC is supposed to use. I would say that's accurate. And Put on your I mic, please. Probably go, I would say that's accurate, and I would probably go further. The uh, technical methodologies that were employed during the licensing process to calculate ground motion from a particular earthquake was included in the deliberations of the NRC and was part of establishing standards. What's transpired over the past years and has accelerated during the last five years is that with each progressive discovery of a new seismic threat, the calculations of shaking from any earthquake has systematically gone down. So that now all these earthquake threats that have been identified are calculated to produce more shaking than that worst case Hosgree. But all of the shaking from all those scenarios has markedly come down to ensure the ability to say that the plant is safe. So whereas previously the debate was, do these earthquake faults exist? How large are they? And how close are they to the plant? Previously that was the debate. And pursuant to the legislation that Governor Schwarzenegger signed the research was performed using advanced geophysical methods that was answered definitively. And suddenly the utility has changed this argument to, yes, that's fine, they exist, but the methodologies we historically used overestimated shaking, so let's just reduce the shaking from all these faults and declare ourselves to be compliant with the license. Which is why I feel it's so important to have a rigorous license amendment process because if they got it wrong, the consequences would be catastrophic. And yes, for the state of California, um, yes, for the nuclear industry, uh, but more importantly, and frankly, for my family. We live within 10 kilometers of that plant, and I brought this, which my daughter gave me, um, who every night sleeps by that plant. I hear and this is not a technical argument. This is an argument about safety for the public. Absolutely. That's, that's what I said to the four commissioners, that they have to go back and read why we set them up, the NRC. And I want to really compliment you for your work in state legislature, because the facts, the new facts that came to light in this earthquake are critical. But it's unbelievable. You just can't manipulate like that. This is shocking. This is, in my view, unethical. This is dangerous. And I just hope that what comes out of this today, via the media, who I hope will hear this point, is that we have new information about these earthquake faults. Mm -hmm. And an inspector came in from the NRC and said, PG&E is not operating Diablo Canyon in compliance with its license re requirements because of these faults. And he said the reactor should be shut down until PG&E comes back into compliance. So I want to ask the three of you a yes or a no, and hope you'll be able to do that. 
Do you think that NRDC's, I'm sorry, NRC's decision to allow PG&E to study its seismic vulnerabilities for as many as four more years before any safety upgrades are required can substitute for NRC's responsibility to ensure that licensees comply with the terms of their operating license. In other words, it's kind of a long question. They say you've got four more years before you have to make any upgrades, as opposed to ensuring that they make them sooner. Would you say now or four years? Now, the earthquake may not wait four years. Good point. We are very familiar with paralysis by analysis. And the threat now is unequivocally so great as a result of these uh, new studies that action is required immediately. Doctor, do you have a final thought? Yeah, well, I would make, I'd make one quick observation that although Fukushima is often used as the test case around which we hold this conversation, it's not the only earthquake which has caused the shutdown of a nuclear power plant. In 2007, Japan had an earthquake, a much smaller earthquake, even a uh, relatively modest sized earthquake compared to what we're discussing that hit the west coast of Japan and knocked out the largest nuclear power plant uh, in the world, the KKPN plant. And just by way of scale, and I was serving on the California Co uh, um, um, uh, uh, Seismic Safety Commission at the time, so I had access to much of the data that was shown that has never seen uh, public purview. Um, that this earthquake was only a magnitude 6.6. .6. Let's put this in context. A 6.6 .6 offshore earthquake, we're talking about a 7.3. Mm -hmm. A 6.6 .6 earthquake located 19 kilometers from this plant, knocked it out of commission and caused very serious damage and fires. 19 kilometers. So in terms of energy release, the energy release from that earthquake was 1 30th the energy that would be released from the earthquake we're now discussing. Mm -hmm. And it was 30 times further away. Mm -hmm. so and it knocked yeah. out that plant. So to argue that it would take a tsunami to take out a nuclear power plant is not supported by the facts. Yes, you. it is, Sam. Unfortunately, I have to disagree with you on this one. There was no damage to any of the safety-related equipment Mr. in that Pitt plant. Mr. Pitcher, talk that to was me. An, talk I'm to sorry. Me. Don't talk to Sam. Talk well, to I, I want to, because I res tremendously respect him for, for his... I understand you respect him, but talk to me. This okay. is a hearing, and I'd like you to address the chair. Thank Please. you. Please. All right. Yeah, there was a transformer fire at, at, at the Kashiwazaki Korea site, okay? It didn't knock out the power plant. There was no release to the public. There was no safety-related structure systems or components that were damaged by that earthquake. In fact, let's go back to the, the Tohoku earthquake that, that did cause uh, uh, the tsunami at Fukushima. The Onagawa plant is much closer to where that plant occurred. There were walk-downs done of the Onagawa plant after the Tohoku earthquake. And like Kashiwazaki, Korea, no damage to any safety-related structure systems or components at that plant. So we have actual operating experience for beyond design basis earthquakes where no safety-related structures are being damaged. I'm not trying to say that we don't study the new information. In fact, I think this is to your point, Chairman Boxer. Yeah. Uh, the licensing basis of a plant does change over time. And there is new information that's brought to the table that has to be evaluated for its safety significance and then acted upon. And there's a process for doing that. Mr. Hirsch may not like the process very much, but it's a very no, disciplined I think process Mr. that the Hirsch NRC the has process. and he that you have like oversight over he to yeah. determine whether new yeah. requirements I mean, are necessary. I just don't think you're being fair. There's a process and there's the integrity of the process. Those are two different things. You have a process where an inspector said about Diablo, it's in violation of its license. It either needs to be upgraded or it has to, the operation has to be suspended until it's upgraded. So I don't think it's fair to say that I don't like the process. I just want a fair process that is not a process that results from too cozy a relationship with the industry. Because in my mind, and I've been around a long time, the industry is better served, as is everybody else, when safety is the mission. Because Look what happened after Fukushima. Not a good thing for the nuclear industry. It's, 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 it's not good. And you can go through all of the... You, I never heard someone sort of try to minimize earthquakes. But anyway, 
Dr. Blakesley, you had some disagreement with his. I, I do. I think the parsing of the ahead. answer was very telling about the, the parsing of his answer. The parsing of the answer was very telling about what was and wasn't damaged, and he identifies certain safety uh, elements that were not damaged. But if you actually looked at the photographs, you can see that the foundation of the nuclear power plant settled in a manner that ruptured the water mains that was there to provide firefighting capability, and through luck, that transformer fire did not. Uh, extend to produce the kind of worst case scenario we saw at Fukushima, but let me say they also had a safety building which was designed for just that purpose. So when the teams of operators ran to get to the safety building, the earthquake had damaged the door so it couldn't be opened. Mm -hmm. They could not get into the building to implement their safety procedures that were inside that building. And when the local fire department came racing to the site because of the alarm, the earthquake had caused sufficient separation of grade in the road. They could not get to the facility using the road. And the nuclear power plant was knocked out of commission for years, or many reactors were. Those are facts. They weren't knocked out by the earthquake, Dr. Blakesley. They were not allowed to operate. I wonder why they weren't allowed to operate. Right. Again, the, the roads in the town of, of um, Kashiwazaki Kairo are not safety related. You know, you two can take this outside. My interest, <laughs> but my interest here, you know, is not in Korea, is not, it's about my state. And 500,000 people, one of them sitting in front of me, who's living in a circumstance where if I don't do my job and NRC doesn't do its job, there could be a terrible situation. Now, if you're conservative, you want to do the conservative thing. And it seems to me a pretty straightforward thing. You either suspend operation until you've retrofitted the plant in the right way and fix it and start it up, or that's it. Those are the two options. You can either fix up the plant or you can suspend operation. So it seems to me that what the NRC has apparently done, which is to give them four years, and what they're doing to change science, which you know we're kind of used to around here, given people's views of scientists and climate, they change, they, they, they pronounce what they want about it. But I don't, I listen to the scientists. And I am very suspicious when you tell me that they have changed their analysis of how much the plant will shake just to, by happenstance, meet the levels that are allowed in the license. This is scary. And, you know, I don't want to overstate what I feel because I don't want to impugn people, but I do want to say there's a lot at stake here. I've gone through some horrific things in California, including an explosion of a, of, of a, of a pipeline where people died, and it turned out they weren't inspections, they weren't upgrades. I've gone through a, a, a traumatic experience with San Onofre, where they made an upgrade, but it was faulty. And, you know, there but for the grace of God, that place is shut down. And, you know, it's clear to me what the options are. I just want to say to all three of you, you've been terrific. All of you, I think the fact that there was a little give and take that way, this way, is always good. And I think that what for me is the critical piece here is the safety of, of that little daughter. And yeah, that's it. That's why I'm here. I'm not here for any other reason. There's no other reason I'm here. And um, I will continue to push hard on this, but I also want to say to the two of my constituents, how important your work is back home, what you did to get the information about the new earthquake, and, and Governor Schwarzenegger then signing that. Congratulations. What if we didn't know about it? I mean, you can only be as good as the information that you have. So I want to thank all three of you. This has been a really long day for us here to get to this, but I think when it comes to the safety of 500,000 people, you know, if we have to do this again, although I must admit I won't have this anymore, and won't Mr. Petrangelo be excited when this gavel goes over to my buddy, Jim Inhofe, who sees things a bit differently. 
Um, but you know what? I still have a role, a voice, and we'll still continue to work together. Thank you very much. We stand adjourned. <laughs>